Today's date is Sunday, April 28th. Here's the coil. You just put a little um, breakout point on the top just to try it, but this big one seems like it works the best. Um, we're still running right around uh, 1.3 turns, give or take. The biggest change here is the rotary spark gap. It is a grinder wheel that I destroyed a quarter inch drill bit by drilling holes for four bolts. I do not recommend that anyone does that unless they have a friend who has lots of drill bits and doesn't mind you killing them because that's what's going to happen. Um, I have really long ele uh, stationary electrodes because I was worried about the heat, but it seems like on 100 nanofarads we're only using one of these caps uh, provided by Custom Electronics Incorporated out of New York. Uh, for reference, they are 0.1 microfarad at, at 20,000 volts DC. Um, we're only using 100 nanofarads. I haven't tested with higher capacitance. That will be next at some point. Um, but this is the rotary gap. Um, John, go ahead and turn on the rotary gap for me. Just spin it up real slow. Okay. And that's essentially what happens. And y you can see that there are the two electrodes on either side of each other are connected by a wire. They bridge a gap, which then you have the arc going across, which is your spark gap. I can then create uh, uh, different beat per seconds by how often and how fast I spin the grinder. You can throw the bit on the ground right there. And that is why you don't, uh, you don't use drill bits on grinder wheels. Pull back a bit, yeah. That nice sharp tip is not meant for cutting anything else anymore, so. Just significantly thinner here than it is there. Yeah, use your friend's drill bits, um, or go get cheap Harbor Freight bits like I did. Either way, nothing else about the coil has changed. Um, I have the two stationary arcs on a singular piece of wood, which is painter's tape down, because, well, I want to move it eventually. Everything else is just kind of tacked in with hot glue because, well, it's a geek project again. Um, other than that, nothing else has really changed on the coil. Still working on figuring out what's wrong with the doubler. I think, actually, that the diodes are dead because I can't test them. I can't even test a brand new Mott cap di uh, a Mott diode. It just doesn't work. I don't understand why. So I'm building uh, 1N4 007s into a string. I'm gonna go with 13 because I think the output voltage of this should be 11,800 after RMS calculations. Uh, go ahead and comment below if, if you have any suggestions regarding building your own diodes. So we're gonna go and get to a quick run through of the coil and you all can see how it works. Oh, and uh, just for reference, I built a little Variac box just so I can, you know, control everything from here. I'm gonna pass the camera off to John and he'll do all the recording from here on out. I need a light source. Here you go. I just need something. All right, we're gonna spin the gap up. Coil on. <laughs> <laughs> 